Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact this house, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone number 0703 0763659 0703 768198 Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Now, tonight, just to welcome you, there is time for everything. And that's what I need to welcome you with tonight. There is time for everything. There is the set time for everything that God wants to do on the face of the earth. And so tonight, I will just introduce the set time for your visitation. The set time for your deliverance. The set time for you to be released from the cage. The set time for you to break forth. There is a set time for everything that God does on the face of the earth. And so tonight, I will just look at different scriptures to establish that God works with set times. And when the set time for something has not happened, nobody can make it to happen. But the trouble is when the set time for something to happen comes, nobody can stop it except yourself. That's why we are gathered. That's why by the grace of God, in this time of your youth, Heaven has decided to do something deliberate for you and you will not miss it. You will not miss your set time. Your set time for God to bring you out, to introduce you. When that time comes, nothing must put you under the bushel. Nothing. You will arise and fulfill your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. The set time, the set time for God to do a work in your life. Do you know, as I will be looking through scripture, that God watches time and he keeps time and he does not allow time to pass without fulfilling what he has ordained for that particular time. And the greatest thing for a young man like yourself, when I started growing up, I realized that, oh, there is a time set by God for certain things to happen in my life. For example, can I tell you a very quick story? Very quick story of my own life. Because there's a set time. When I got into the university, before I got there, there were some, you know, we were there in the church fellowship, and we were all doing brothers and sisters, and we were singing in the choir. And you know sometimes when we go to the choir at that time, I don't know whether it has changed now. When we start dancing like this, dancing like this, you put your eyes and look at the Cecilia and you dance like this. 
<laughs> no, suddenly, many of my friends and colleagues, they started seeing vision. You know that kind of vision. So you see, everybody started catching vision. Suddenly, I saw people peering up. This brother is peering up with this one. This one is peering. So they said, Bravile, who is your special seed? So I also started squeezing my eyes if I would catch a vision. For you know, when I went on to pray, one girl was even very, very attractive. I have not yet spoken when she already said yes. Some of you, you are in that kind of trouble, isn't it? You say the way, the way Sister Rosalie is looking at me, there is something there, something there. <laughs> but when I went to pray, God said, it is not time. There is time for everything. If you do a right thing at the wrong time, it will be a wrong thing. If you start a relationship when it is not the time for it, you are going to enter into a dungeon. There is a set time for everything. So God said, it's not time. So I decided, I said, okay, since God said it's not time, I close my eyes. When they are greeting, I say, Bragle, Bragle, I say, don't greet me, don't greet me, it's not time, it's not time. It's not time to receive greetings. So we went on. So we got to the campus. And everything was happening again. Everything was happening again. And we went for a village evangelism where we were preaching. When I finished preaching, miracles are taking place. People have repented. Some people that were sick have been healed instantly. And we were all rejoicing. And suddenly, Suddenly. <laughs> hey! As we finish this prayer, something said, Open your eyes. <laughs> sister T, Sister T, say, Look at Sister T. I say, Oh my God. When I wanted to open my mouth to talk to Sister T, God said, and Sister T, it's not the time. Oh God, what is all this now? But when the time came, effortlessly, without doing trial and error, Because that's the third time. Now when I have now come to the right place, the right time, and the right relationship, we thought that we are going to do this wedding quickly. And the Lord said, even the time for your wedding has been set. You cannot affect it. I want to, I'm telling you a story, a life story. Because I have come into this meeting this year with a burden in my heart that each one of you, you will never miss your time. When you should rise, nothing should make you sit down. When you should shine, you must not be under the bushel. When you should break through, you must not break down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
So when we started, God said, it's not yet time. There are certain things that you must go through before the time will be. To cut a long story short, the Lord said, the day that you are going to wait, I will come there. I said, God is always everywhere. Say no, 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 no. So on that day, I will come down. So I began to say, okay, so Lord, when is the day? When is the time? As we were praying, I was praying with a brother, and he said. The Spirit mentioned a particular date of a particular month at a particular time, 11 a.m. I said, ah. So, you know, because we were in prayer and we are closing our eyes and we are pleading with God, and this brother just announced, said, Just says the Lord. It's on so so date, on so so month, at so so time. We didn't have calendar. Did you hear me? No calendar. It's not like now when you have your calendar up to year 2050 in your answer. No. So you know what I did? I went into modulo arithmetic. If you did a little mathematics, you know what we call modulo arithmetic. We use modular arithmetic to calculate dates and years and time. So I went, I started calculating. By the time I calculated, I wanted to know whether that date was a Saturday. Sure, it was a Saturday. I said, oh God. And then he said, your wedding will not be at 10 a.m. It will be at 11 a.m. I said, no. Church, they don't do wedding at 11, they do it at 10. God said it's 11. Put 11 there. That's the time that was set. Ah. So can God set time for minute issues like that? He said yes. When I went to the church, officiating uh, minister. He said, no, in our church, all wedding is 10 a.m. I said, but the Lord said the time for my own wedding on that particular date will be 11 a.m. He said, that's nonsense, nonsense. Whichever God is telling you that, go and keep your mouth shut. In our church, it's 10 and if you don't arrive there by five minutes to ten, it's cancelled. So, but because I knew the set time that God said it was eleven, I told my wife, my fiance, then I said, It's eleven oh, it's eleven oh, but we don't know, but we are going to obey authority. So on the program we put ten. But we knew it would be eleven. Do you know what happened? When we got there, the vicar came and met me and said, eh, Mr. Connie, I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm very, very sorry. Your wedding cannot take place at 10. Please, please, it has to be at 11. I said, what happened? He said, just two weeks ago, one of the very important parochial members of their church died. And the barrier had to be fixed on that day. And they had to think of what to need to do. So they fixed the barrier between 9 and by 10.30 they will finish. So your wedding will start at 11 a.m. I say yes. There is a set time for everything. 
So I reminded him, I said, but you know I told you it is leaven. He said, how did you know? How did you know? I said, ah, he who sees the end from the beginning. He said it, but you did not hear. Now, when it remains two weeks to the wedding, the Lord said, as I told you before, I am coming there. And the ground will shake. Ah. You know, we used to sing that song that time. The Lord reigned, let the earth tremble. The Lord reigned. I thought it is the kind of song we used to sing. Say, yeah, well, if the earth will shake, anybody, yeah, let it shake. He said, no. I'm not talking of that uh, mental shaking that you are talking about. Though. The ground will shake. Begin to pray that nobody will wound themselves. Pray that people will not have accidents because I'm going to shake the earth on that day. And it will start at 11. So, <laughs> we dressed up. We were going for this wedding in prayers. I gathered all the brethren that night of bachelor season, that you call it, it was a, a night vigil because we were expecting. We said, God, we don't know what we do. We don't know whether anybody will be wounded though. God, please have mercy, help us. I've never seen that before. When the wedding started on the of 11, as we were marching in, I was sensing the presence of God in an unusual manner. And I used to think that, Lord, don't let me fall down here. So that they will not say, the bridegroom fell under the anointing. <laughs> the Anglican church, they will not understand. They will think maybe the spirit don't catch up. So I was begging. He said, no, no, no. It's not, it's not you who will fall down. The ground will shake here. So we're going. Once the man of God declared, said, I declared their husband and wife. And we took a song which God himself told us that we would sing. You know what happened? Suddenly, there was an earth tremor. It has never happened in Nigeria before. And for these several 30 something years, it has not repeated itself. And the Grand Shook is a circumference of about 50 kilometers was shaking. Church bell was ringing by itself. The, you know, unlike, unlike as our ministers are sitting here, you know, ministers of the Anglican Communion, this is where they normally sit in the chancery. Eh? When the ground began to shake, <laughs> the vicars, the venerable, with their long, 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 long rope, they were jumping from the window. <laughs> then we took over. Because we knew the Lord has come. And the song was singing, Through the love of God, our Savior of we be well, we pass through great tribulation, all must be. When we, when, I, when we sing like that, we say, Hallelujah! For the first time in the congregation of Anglican, that time, Hallelujah was shaking the whole place. Why did I tell you such a story? Walking with God, Learning to follow God as a young man can be exciting. And one of the cries of my heart as we start this meeting and as we begin a very intentional youth and student congress is that several of you in your youth, the set time for eternal things to happen in your life you will not omit it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
It is important now that you are young never to miss your time. There are some old people you see now. They are struggling in life. If they have told you their story, they will have told you, say, I miss my time. I miss the time set for my life. I have been struggling to catch up. I have not been able ever since. When I see young people who are just whiling away their lives, I say, ah, if this man knows the time of his visitation, he will not have done that. So let's speak some few scriptures quickly and then we establish what I need to say tonight and then I'll release you. In Luke chapter 19, I want you to begin from there. Then I will go back and check different things. Just establish that there is a time, a set time. A set time for your life. A set time for your salvation. A set time for your deliverance. A set time for your breakthrough. A set time for you to seek God. Luke 19. Are you in Luke 19? Go quickly there. And I want you to read verse 41, 42, 43, 44. Right? I know they are putting it up for us. That's good. I read from here. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and he wept over it. I want you to listen. Jesus came near the city of Jerusalem and he began to weep. I will tell you why he began to weep. Let's read the passage first. My prayer is that God will not have a reason to start weeping over your life when you are still young. The Lord came near a city. In that city, everything was normal. The buildings are looking good. The market is well organized. Nobody ever smelled any calamity. So when Jesus was weeping, some are saying, what is making him to cry? For what? But look at the issue. And he said, look at what he said. If thou hast known. If thou hast known. Even you. At least. In this your day. The things which belong unto your peace. But now, they are hid from your eyes. For the days will come upon you that your enemies shall cast a trench about you and compass you round about and keep you in on every side and shall lay you even with the ground and your children within you and they shall not leave in you one stone upon another. Why? Did you see a because at the end of that verse 44? Eh? Look at it. What is the because? Can you read it? Because thou knowest not the time of your visitation. He said, ah, Jerusalem. He began to cry. He was weeping over the city. Even when nobody sees any danger. Nobody imagined that a problem ahead. But he began to say, ah, 
Jerusalem. Jerusalem. If you have known even you, at least even if you didn't know before, or even if you did not feel anything before, at least in this your day, did you see that? In this your day, the things which belong to your peace, the things that pertain to your peace, the things that you need to do in order to prepare you for a good future, the things you need to emphasize so that your future may be a blessing. He said, but now. Did you see the meaning of the word but now? What is the word but now? But at the present time. At this time, when you need to know it is hidden from your eyes, you are going to pray one prayer before I go on. Father, don't let my day and my time of visitation be hidden from my eyes. Can you pray that prayer just for one second? Tell God, Father, don't let what belongs to my peace what will set me for a glorious future? What will make me an overcomer? What will make me to fulfill my destiny? Don't let it be hidden from my eyes in this time in the name of Jesus Christ. Did you make that prayer? Please pray it. Now, he said, but now, they are hid from your eyes. For the days will come upon you that your enemies shall do what? Shall cast a trench. They will dig, they will dig a trench around you. Can you imagine? You have been surrounded with your enemy and they now dig a very big trench that even if you want to escape, you can only fall into the ditch. Even if you want to run, you only fall into the ditch. Say they will cast a trench around you and compass you round and keep you in on every side. They will hem you in. And they shall lay you even with the ground. That is, they will level you down. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another. Why? What is the reason? Because thou knowest not the time of your visitation. Now that's the first problem I want to lay before you tonight. I don't expect this meeting to be too long for tonight, but I need to say some things importantly before we can pray and release you. Do you know the time now? Jesus said, but now. They are hidden from you. And because you did not know the time of your visitation, then your future is already confiscated. Because you did not know the time when God set for your visitation. Or you were careless about the things that you need to do in this day of your visitation, Jesus saw a, 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 a bleak. He saw a, 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 a terrible situation and he began to cry. He said, Ay, Look at this girl. Look at this girl. How I wish she knows that this is her time of visitation. I wish she knows that this is the time set for her, her life to be prepared for a future. And the master started weeping. Do you know that what could make a future to be a trouble for any man may not be what he will do in the future. Is what he does today. 
in his time of visitation. Are you hearing me? Eh? And what may make you great in the future may not be what you are going to do in the future. It may be what decision you took today in the time of your visitation that will set your journey in life. Are you hearing me at all? So I saw that so Jesus was crying for a future that will happen to these people not because of what they will do in the future but because what they did not see in their time of visitation. Do you know that if this is the time that God has prepared for you to experience his grace in your life. Do you know sometimes this kind of meeting has been arranged? You don't know why. You don't know why. It is possible that you are about to take a very, very crucial decision. You wanted to say yes to one man because he has been giving you money in school. You are about to say yes, you know, and he may say he like me, I like him. But God has interrupted your answer by bringing you to this meeting. So that you will not weep in the future. One of the prayers I'm praying for you tonight is that none of you will go out of this conference missing your own time. There are things that must happen to you now so that the future can be established. There are things that you must experience today so that what God is planning for your future may be established. When it didn't happen to these people, he said, at least in this your day, you know when I read the Bible and they say, at least, you know what they taught him, he said, even if you have missed it at all times, even if you are not serious before, even if you didn't take this seriously before, but at least in this your day, do you know that God may have organized this meeting even though there are thousands of people that have come, it may just be because of you alone. Sometimes I used to wonder, I say, God, you mean you can make me with all my BC program? You spend so much money to go all the way to another country just for one man. You know what God said to me? He said, yes. Because the price of a soul is completely invaluable. There's no amount of money you put together to rescue a soul that will be too much. So I don't understand. God may compare people like us to change all our itinerary, to report in Accra, for a student and youth day, student congress. Just because there is a brother here. There is a young man here. Whose destiny has to be affected this weekend. May you never miss it. Don't let anything divert your attention. This is not a casual program. Don't let anything distract you. You may have come with some people from your campus. As soon as you landed here, forget them. Know that I have come. This may be a set time for set things to happen in my life. Hallelujah. 
Do you know that after that, all the problem that has happened to the nation of Israel, that up to today, Jerusalem has not yet recovered. There is constant battle. You know the Philistines, or what you call the PLO, the Arab. You know how they have etched them in. And almost every day there is a battle. All because they miss one day. My brother, you can miss one day and spend 40 years looking for recovery and may not be possible. You may take a wrong step one day and 50 years of your life you will only be struggling to recover and it is not possible. When God said the set time for your exploit, I want to first beg you to open your heart to God and say, Lord, the time you have set for my life, don't let me miss it in the name of Jesus. The Bible spoke about Joseph. I want you all to look at the story of Joseph. Just short, short story I'm doing. I'm not talking about much. I just want you to know that there's a set time for everything. And only those who know how to work with God at the appropriate point, time, responding to what God says to them, will not miss the divine blessing. I will have said, let's go and read it from the book of Genesis where the story was told, but we don't have time. So let's go and read the summary. Can we read the summary? Eh? Let's go to Psalm 105 and read the summary of the life of Joseph and see one thing that stood very strongly in my heart this night and I want you to know it. Psalm 105. If you go to Psalm 105, are you there? Verse 16, verse 17, verse 18, verse 19, verse 20, 21, 22. Can I read? Eh? Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. <laughs> he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hot with fetters. He was laid in iron. Until when? Are you following? Until when? Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance, to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Now, listen. You know when you are reading the Bible, when they said God called for a famine over the land, will you ever think that it is God that made famine to come upon the land of Canaan to the extent that nobody could get food anywhere? until they went down to Egypt. Could you ever think like that? But that is God who has told Abraham before that for you to know that your children will possess this land, your children will go to a land and be in bondage for 430 years. When it is time for God to relocate them to Egypt, he brought a famine in the land. 
I can imagine some of you. You say, I don't know why my father cannot even pay my school fees. They are not serious. No. It could be divine arrangement to relocate you to what will change your destiny. It could be the hand of God working to prepare you for a great plan that they have for you. So suddenly, God was arranging, and look at the arrangement. One morning like this, Jacob just called his son Joseph and said, Joe, can you please go and check your brothers on the field? They have gone with the floor for the past three, four, five days. We don't know what's happening to them. Go and check. When Joseph left home that morning, let me ask you, did he plan to sleep? No, talk to me, please. Did he plan to sleep? Did he take a second clothes? No. He was just to go and check his brother over there and return. He did not know that that journey he took that money is the journey to his destiny. He did not know that God was arranging a divine timing for him to become the prime minister in the coming days. He didn't know. So he just said, here am I, send me. And as he went in obedience to his father, he went and went and went. He didn't see his brother. When he was about to turn back, another person said, I heard them say they are going to Dothan. Maybe check them there. And as he got there, look at his brothers, wicked brothers. He said, look at this dreamer. Behold, the dreamer is coming. Let's take him, kill him, and see what will become of his dream. They thought they were doing something to kill him. But as you read your Bible, who sent Joseph to Egypt? Eh? Talk to me, please. Who sent him to Egypt? The Lord. But they sold him out as a slave. They thought they are selling him out. But that's the hand of God sending him to the place of his manifestation. And he was there. When he got to the house of Potiphar, look at that brother. He never misbehaved. Everything that Potiphar was was committing to his hand, prospered. Until Madame, Madame, Madame Pot. What do I call her? Madame Pot. She's supposed to be called Mrs. Potiphar. But for short, they call her Madame Pot. Eh? And Madame Pot was always arranging a pot where to put Joseph. The Bible said Joseph became a very lovely, handsome young man. And as he would be doing his normal business, Madame is near her eye like this. And you know what the Madame did? Decided to give him a nickname. JJ! And when she wants to be very, very nice, she say, Joe, Joe, Jack, Joe, Jack. You know the meaning of that? Joseph, Jacob. Because his father's name is Jacob. Say, Joe, Jack. Joe, Jack. But when she wants to be cynical, say, JJ. JJ. Hey. So when Joseph will run there, say, yes, man. He said, say, no, 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 no. Don't call me man. You make me feel old when you call me man. I'm a young, I'm a, I'm a younger. And honestly, I want to tell you, young blood is inside me. It was unfortunate that I found myself in the port of Potiphar. Call me 
journey. Call me what? Journey. Journey. Journey for Potiphar. But I'm looking forward to a time when my full name will be called Jenny Joseph Jacob. I'm looking forward to when I will be J J J. Hmm. Wicked woman. Looking for how to put the destiny of Brother Joseph in a pot. You, some of you sitting before me. Somebody is setting a pot to finish your destiny. And for your deliverance, God brought you to this meeting. They are sending you text. And you know this, this man, he knows how to arrange the text. 6 a.m., just as you are waking up, Rose, have you risen? Just thinking about you all the night. As I close my eyes, it's you I saw. As I turned, your shadow just fell upon me. And I wonder, how can I do without you? Have a nice day. Someone who cares. You say, who is this person? Who is this person? You read the text again and again and again. When you are about to sleep, 12 midnight, your phone will just do pee pee A text has come in. The eyes that is looking for beauty never blinks. The heart that is panting and throbbing over a rounded figure like you never gives up. Even if you don't answer my text, I have pledged Never to stop writing you. Just to tell you that even this night, I wonder whether I will be able to sleep without thinking about you. Signed, someone who cares. So when you go to the class, the lecturer is teaching. You are not listening to your lectures. You are scrolling through the text. It says, You are going, you are going. There is a pot where they want to cook you. May God deliver you from that pot in the name of Jesus. There is a set time when God has arranged for your deliverance. There is a set time that you must not miss if you don't want to miss your glory. There is a set time and I can see the devil is a wicked devil. He also targets your set time to so block your eyes so that you will not see. But we have prayed tonight and I'm going to pray again. My eyes shall see my day. Satan, you are defeated. Jesus reigns in my life. My time of visitation will not bypass me in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine how this woman we call JJ? So when the boy goes and says, Mom, Mom, he says, No, 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 no. I don't like this thing. The way you try to make me old, I don't like it. Call me Jenny.
But if Jenny is too heavy in your mouth, say J, J, J. Uh -huh. That's how I want you to call me in this house. Hey, everywhere Joseph goes, the woman's eyes. The Bible said she fixed her eyes upon him. And there are guests there, you know what I'm talking about. You know eye contact and eye communication. How sometimes you roll the ball of your eyes 360 degrees. Any young man whose eyes sees your eye at that time, it will just melt inside. Brother, look not at those eyes though. Those eyes are magnetic. They will make you forget where you are going. Do you know how many young men have had accidents in their life? Because they couldn't face where they are going again. When they saw this girl that is doing like this. You know when I was on campus. We were going for, for mathematics class one morning. And I had some two girls that were in my class. But I, they did not know I was coming behind them. So they were discussing. Two girls were discussing. Say, so yeah, this, this, this morning, we're going to, we're going to cause a star in that class. We dress to kill. So I was, ah, uh -uh. what would they do in our class? I didn't know that as they were talking, they were planning. This is our lecture hall. One plan that they will come from behind. I don't want one plan, it will enter from the front. And the way they dress, if God does not deliver you, your eyes will see trouble. They dress in such a way that everything is revealing. And as we were entering the class, I had already overtaken them because I was rushing to sit in front. I just noticed that this girl, they should have entered because we were almost walking together. I didn't know that they deliberately delayed to come in when the whole class is settled and when the lecturer is here. So the other girl started coming in and she wants to sit in front. She then like this. And then this other girl came in here. Come and see how my classmates, how they were whistling. And shouting, I go do, I go do, I get deal. The lecturer forgot what he was writing on the wall. If God does not help you, when the time he has set for your deliverance, you may enter into their port and they are on your campuses. They are there. You think they are innocent? No! They are deliberate. And it is you they are looking for. They will not catch you in the name of Jesus Christ. So one day, Madame made sure that everybody left the house. He said, um, Mark, uh, you go to, uh, go to someone, there's something you are going to help me get there. And uh, I've told the Madame that whenever it is ready, that's when she will come back. Even if it is 4 p.m., wait. Jackie? Jacqueline, Jacqueline, you're going to Kumasi. There's something you are going to do for us. She made sure that everybody left home, remaining JJ. As Joseph was doing his own normal duty, and I said, JJ, can I see you? 
He ran there thinking that it was something emergency. The madam said, Why are you panting? Relax. Sit down. Go into the fridge and just bring me a cup of uh, a cup of juice and bring a cup for yourself. When your august wife, when the master's wife wants to be sharing the same cup with a houseboy, you know that something they there. Hey, Joseph was wondering, hey, what am I in for today? When the madame landed, she dressed so tartly and said, JJ, when will you be matured? I have been making eyes to you, you know, see. I use body language, you know, fear. I set up programs for you to come and play into. You are always on your hand. And what is your problem? Somebody is dying for you and you are behaving as if uh, you, are, you, are not, you, are, you, are, you don't have any feeling. If you don't understand body language, you don't understand eye contact, you don't understand the parable, let me break it. I just want to tell you that I'm dying for you. I love you. And I, will, I cannot pardon myself until I sleep with you. Ah! Brother, young man, it's a very problem, it's a big problem when it's a man running after a girl. But it's a bigger problem when it is a girl, a woman that is arranging. She's sitting and scattering her leg deliberately for you to see a cinema, a cinema, and your eyes is going there. You are going. If God does not deliver you, you are going. He said, a foolish young man is going to the grave. He said, a house is the pit of hell. When Joseph knew that this is an arrangement, is an arrangement to finish his life, he began to remember. I have a dream for my life. I have a dream for my life. My life must never waste. I have a dream for my life. He started singing. Say, what are you talking about? JJ, what song are you singing? Say, I'm singing from my old country. I have a dream for my life. I have a dream for my life. I will never waste it on your life. I have a dream for my life. Madam, you may try. Madam, you may try. I will never, never fail. I have a dream for my life. So the boy started moving towards the door when the madam grabbed him and grabbed his clothes and said, Lie with me! Go nowhere. And Joseph thought in a moment, Lord, what do I do? I can't end my life here. I must not end my dream here. I saw dreams of stars. Eleven stars bind down to me. Will I end it on the lap of an old woman? Young man, you are hearing me here. God is speaking about stars falling before you. A glorious manifestation ahead of you. But see what you are doing with a girl. See how you are sleeping with that girl. You are sleeping with a graveyard. And Jesus is weeping over your head. I say, hey, how I wish this boy knows the time of his visitation. How I wish he can see the glorious future and not end it on the lap of a useless girl like this. You may think it's a five minute enjoyment. It will become 50 years of sorrow.
I don't have time to tell you so many stories tonight. But my cry tonight is that you will not miss your time of visitation in the name of Jesus Christ. And that from this night, your eyes of understanding will be opened. That's how Joseph took a quick decision. You may tear my clothes, you will not tear my destiny. I came here naked. I can still run out naked. But you will not, de you will not destroy my destiny. There's a glory I'm looking for. It's not to marry Jennifer or Potiphar. I'm not meant for your pot, madam. Go and look for the rat and rabbit you will put in your pot, not my life. How I wish somebody will stand up to all those spirits of adultery. Those spirits of fornication, those careless sins, the lust of the flesh that is worrying young men. I wish somebody would stand up in this meeting and say, no, I'm not the rabbit to be roasted in that pot. God has a plan for me. God has a journey for me. My future must not be destroyed here. And as Joseph <laughs> just lose the button. The madam grabbed the cloth and my brother just came out and ran. There are certain temptations. You cannot stand as I bind you, I bind you, I bind you, I bind you. They will catch you. What did the Bible say? Flee! You know the meaning of flee? Can I tell you the meaning of flee? Flee means run, jump, fly at the same time. That's the meaning of the word flee. Run, jump, fly at the same time. Escape for your life. Escape for your destiny. When the time to escape comes, you dare not say they are playing Ludo. When the time to say no comes, you don't go on talking big English. When the time for you to say, ah, it's time to run. My destiny is not for sale. That's not the time to be playing and say, eh, 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 I don't want to be rude. Eh, since she says she loves me, eh, that's why. Eh. Ah, that thing you are doing literally, you will cry many years. Nobody will hear your prayer. Why is God bringing you to this meeting tonight? It's a time. It's a set time. You may not see what Jesus sees and say, go for student congress. There's something I want to do in your life. That's how they cast that brother into prison you know, without appeal. As soon as the boy ran out, the mother said, what do I do now? What do I do now? Hey! Terrible woman. She can tell lies like anything. When she tells lies, she's speaking her native language. You know what she started to say? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, oh, 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 help me, oh, I'm in trouble. Oh. Everybody got it. What happened? Mrs. Spotify, what happened? Is there... <laughs> <laughs> they shed crocodile tears. They are too advanced and sophisticated than you. Are you hearing me, my friend? You are naive. They are sophisticated. Some of you, you are keeping friendship with a girl that is more sophisticated than you. You see her doing her put up like this before me. And you are trying to copy her. She's been sleeping with men. Nothing has happened because she knows how she plans it. But for you, the first time, the first time 
may be the time that Satan plans to finish you. There are guests that you, the first sex they had became the troublesome baby for the rest of their year. Some were planning to be medical doctors when during the holiday it happened. Just 10 minutes. 10 minutes scattered all they could have become. They have now learned sewing. They are now doing fashion design. And eh? so mistress. That's who could have been a medical consultant of a specialist hospital. She's sewing now and patching clothes. Why? Because 10 minutes of carelessness. The devil said, let's finish her. Thank God that when the time came for God to bring Joseph to the limelight, he was not damaged. He had not missed it. The devil couldn't catch him. There is a time for you. Your time must not be spoiled ahead of that time. You are going to join me in prayer. Finally, do you know? Do you know that even for Jesus, there was a time for him to come? The Bible says, when the fullness of time came, for John the Baptist, he was in the desert until the time of his showing. There is time for everything. And there is time for every man. And there are things that must happen so that your own time will not be wasted. I just want to announce to you tonight that the time for your exploit is here. You may say, ah, it's because when God wants to use a man for something glorious, tomorrow he visits him today to prepare him for it. As I welcome you into this meeting, I already sense that it is time to call on God. It is time just to pray and say, God, <laughs> is this why you brought me here? You have been going for youth meeting. This is different. You've been going for student meeting somewhere. This is not the kind. There's a divine appointment. That's why you are here. Before we begin to deal with divine timing for divine assignment, as the Lord will be leading us tomorrow. What is time now? What is time now? Say, now is the day of salvation. Now, I read it. I read it quickly. Second Corinthians chapter 6. It said, We then as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he says, I have had you in a time accepted. There's a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succored you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I have too many stories to tell you, but let me leave it. How God, in His mercy, delivers me, otherwise, you will never meet me. I escaped. I escaped from wrong girls. They would have made me a non-entity. I would have died in the village. But God, that same God who helped me, He will help you today. That same God who was jealous over my life, I know you will be jealous over your own life as well. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
What time are we now? The time of deliverance. The time accepted. The time and the day of salvation. The time to say bye bye to the devil. The time to take God seriously. The time to check is my life right with God. The time not to be playing Ludo with the devil. The time not to be playing card. Because what you do today determines what happens to your destiny. So, as I stop here tonight, I hear God saying, the set time, the set time to visit Zion has come. The set time for me to visit this young man has come. The set time for me to forgive him has come. Even though you have been falling and rising for years, God said, at least in this your day of visitation, at least in this your day. You know it touches me that God is saying, the time of ignorance I decided to overlook. But now, this is your time. This is your time of opportunity. This is your second chance. As we will get on to pray. Never you postpone it. Never you be distracted. Open up to God and say, Lord, so is this why you have been... You have been looking at me. Is this why you have not let me go over this time? Is this why you want to do something with my life and I kept not knowing it? Lord, I come to you tonight. I surrender. You may have been caught with the sin of immorality and different, different manifestation of it. But God is saying yes. Yes. But the time for your visitation the time for your deliverance, the time for me to forgive you has come. At least in this your day, if you will know your time, it will be all right. The last thing that happened to you could have finished your life. In fact, you thought that a pregnancy would occur. But when you saw your menses, ah, you said, thank God. Do you know that God only gave you a chance so that your future will not be wrecked? And if you will tell me, if I ask you, where is that boy now? He has littered you. He has seen another flower that he's running after. These are grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. They are always jumping, hopping over anything like I discuss flower and all they are looking for is to pluck your own flower and leave you damaged you are going to respond to God tonight and say Lord it is the time for me to say yes to my Savior it is the time for me to surrender all it is the time for me to say Jesus come into my life but as I conclude may I say to you I see him stretching his hand he said it is the accepted time. It is the time of salvation. It is the time of forgiveness. I have decided to give you another chance this year. I have decided to do a new thing in your life. It is your time. It is your time. It is your time. It is your time. Is your time. Isaiah says, Seek ye the Lord when he might be found. Call upon him when he is near. You know why? A time is coming when you will weep like this. Nothing can be done again. He said he missed it. Would you like to join me as we pray tonight? Eh? Can I ask you to arise on your feet? And wherever you are, as a young person, God brought you into this meeting. Or maybe you are even an older person, but God just brought you because heaven is saying, give him another time. Give him another chance. Give him another opportunity. He misbehaved because nobody has helped him. But give him another chance. 
while we stand in the place of prayer. Don't go anywhere. Just stand and talk to God in a very clear manner. Open your mouth and tell God, I must not miss my time. My day of visitation must not elude me. My opportunity for forgiveness, my opportunity for deliverance, my opportunity for my release from the addiction of sin is time. I don't want it to be postponed. I don't want another, another, another running about in the wilderness. Here am I, Lord. Here am I. Open your mouth. Talk to God. Speak anyhow. Speak in your local dialect. Speak in English. Speak anyhow you want to speak. But speak to God from your heart. Say, Lord, I've heard you tonight. I have heard your voice tonight. You have described my situation. And I cannot escape again. But because Jesus said, I have not come to help angels. If you were an angel, God may not have been useful to you tonight. But I have come to help those that are sinners. I have come to deliver those that are weak. I have come to set free those that are tired. I have come to help those that are helpless. I have come to forgive those that the devil has battered. This is your day of visitation. Say, at least in this your day, if you have known, if you have known what pertains to your peace, you will not run into the calamity of the future. The set time for God to do a new thing in your life. Open your mouth and say, Lord, draw me near Near our place, Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 place, Lord, to thy precious bleeding star. Draw me nearer, draw me nearer. Near a blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast thou draw me nearer, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding supper. While you stand in the place of prayer, Open your mouth and tell God, I can't hide myself from you. If you are saying, this is my time of deliverance. This is my time for my forgiveness. This is the time for you to set me free. This is the time for you to turn your attention to me. This is the time for you to give me another chance. I will not let you go. I will not let you go tonight unless you help me. I don't know whether it will happen like this tomorrow. I don't know whether I will be there to hear you clearly tomorrow. Today, today, Jesus must answer my cry. Open your mouth and say, God, my struggle must end tonight. The calamities that have been falling upon my life must end tonight. The secret sin, the secret defeat, the secret failures, the secret compromise, the secret addiction of my life must end tonight. Tonight, tonight, Jesus must answer me. Even tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As you are praying, you can remember that on the campus, your parents were thinking that you are still standing well. But as soon as you went to that campus, you are falling. You are only covering up. The time for God to help you has come. The time for God to set you free is here. The time for God to cleanse you from all unrighteousness is here. The time of the blood. 
The time of oblation has come. The time of the evening sacrifice. The time when God is saying, Come unto me, all ye that are laboring and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Jesus stands and says, Yes, come. I will in no wise cast you out. Thank you, Father. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you before you continue your prayer. Father, please, having taken time to come to us, having decided to pass our way, don't let this day of visitation elude anybody. Please go from row to row, from person to person. All those who need your touch this night, bring us a touch, O oh God. All those who need to make things right with you, everyone that needs help tonight, because you have decided to have mercy upon us, do not pass me by. While you are helping others, while you are touching others, while you are changing others, while you are forgiving others, while you are resetting the destiny of others, Savior, do not pass me by. Lord, as your children will respond to you, every chain on their feet, let it be broken. Every deception of Satan, scatter it tonight. Everything that holds them down, Father, uprooted by your anointing in the name of Jesus. Every quiet voice of doubt that is saying, not tonight. Not tonight. Father, silence that voice. If not tonight, when? Tonight, you will answer our prayer. Now, God is searching for this hand and say, come, I will give you rest. It's your time. If this night you have heard the voice of the Lord and you want to make things right with God, secret things that you have not been able to tell anybody, God is saying, bring it to me. Let's settle the matter. I will give you a new beginning. I deliberately pass this way because I want to give you a time, a divine opportunity to make a difference. Where are you? Lift up your right hand wherever you are, in the gallery, or in the hall, or those that are outside. Wherever you are and you have heard the voice of the Lord, and you just know that this is especially my case. This is the day God has ordained for my life to be changed, for my sin to be forgiven, for my life to be redirected. For me to make peace with God. Lift up that right hand and make it above your head. This is not the time to look at someone else. This is the time to make things right. This is the time, you see, when Jesus was weeping over that city, he was seeing the future that is going to be dangerous because of what they are omitting that day. The future before you is more important than what you are today. But it is today that you have to decide so that that future will not be spoiled. God bless you. Lift it above your head. And do so personally. Don't encourage someone to raise his hand if he's not serious. It is you saying, God, my time must not pass me by. We're going to take that little song and I'd like you to please carry your own Bible or your bag wherever you are. And just come to this altar. The altar is very small. But find a space there. There's a space in God for you. Just come. And as you are coming down. As you are coming. Please carry your bag. If you have your. Uh, your handbag. Or your Bible. Your phone. Don't leave it behind. Just come. And say, Lord, just as I am, I am coming, Lord. I am coming, Lord. As you have lifted up your right hand, take one step. Thank you, my brother. 
come as close to the altar as possible because many people are coming. Draw as close to this altar as you can. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Yeah. Your right hand above your head. Keep lifting it and say, God, I'm coming to you. God bless you. God bless you. It's a new day. It's a new beginning. God. God, who has a great plan for your life, is I'm giving you a chance. I'm giving you a time. Savior, 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 yeah. God bless you. If you are coming from the gallery, come down quickly. Let me just see you lifting up your right hand above your head as you are coming. Do not pass me by. Do not pass me by.